and that felt like adorable. So, um, it is 25 to 12. Um, we've had breakfast and everything. Charlie's obviously, as you can see, about to nap. Um, and we've got an appointment for Nobby at 3.40, so we're a little bit nervous about it, but obviously it's got to be done because he's not well, so... Yeah, but we'll let you know how that goes. Um, we're going to be leaving the girls here, obviously, because we don't really want them in the car on their own when it's, like, especially not when it's this cold. Um, what else? Can't think of anything else. Can you think of anything else? Not really anything else to say really. It's just like got his appointment later. Gonna be thinking about it until that point. And then when we get to that point, it's gonna be probably be stressful. And then we shall see what happens, but We'll keep you updated. Wish us luck. Can you hear the power in this new oxygen machine, babe? Yeah. Makes you wonder whether the other machine was working right. But here's little Mr. Man. He's very skinny and he's, he's not really moving very much, but um, yeah. Let's go see how he's doing. Praying that everything's okay. He's really is just like a little gentle soul. He just looks. You do anything. When we first got him, he was biting people, kicking. He wouldn't let you hold him because he was just mistreated. Yeah, and then obviously since we've had him, we've just cuddled them and just gave him the life of luxury. And now he just lets you hold him like this, and lets you kiss him. So he said we adopted him from pets at home, but... I was just going to say, because um, he was mistreated and he reacted badly to that, no one wanted him. Yeah, because she said because he was mistreated and reacted bad from it, nobody wanted him. I think he was in pets at home for about six or eight months, yeah. and just not being adopted. And we were just like, we'll have him. He's beautiful. But, um, yeah. Just, um... Just praying that everything's okay. You can see his little nose going. Mm. He's a sweet little darling boy. So we'll let you know what happens when we come out. But for now, he's snuggled up with his mummy. Hi guys, we've just come out the vets. We've got a little um nobby here. And the vet said that she in her twenty five years of being a vet, she's very rarely came across a bunny that's reached the age of eight, nine. And Mr. Spice, our old rabbit, he was eight. And Gizmo, our other rabbit, is currently eight, so she said that we look after our boys so well and you can see because their coats are perfect their teeth are really good um like everything is perfect of nobby apart from his weight um and she does think that it's just down to um old age we've got some stuff to syringe feed him over the next week to see if we can build up his weight um but obviously if it he's at the minute he weighs 1.22 kilograms which is very very little and when she felt his tummy he's got a load of food in his tummy he's eaten um he's eaten the exact same as our other rabbit gizmo it's just for some reason he's just losing weight and he is literally skin and bones so yeah we're going to be syringe feeding him and we've got another appointment on the 17th um, just to check up and see but she said that it's likely to be old age and 
he's coming to the end of his life, which is really heartbreaking. He's just let down like this now. So, Sophie and I are going to be spending a lot of time with him, more so than usual, um, over the next week, just to, like, just so we can love on him and just be with him. Um, I'm completely heartbroken. And I'm worrying that if Norbert dies, then... What, what's Gizmo gonna do? Gizmo's gonna have lost his best friend. So I'm like pretty scared for that side of things as well, but what can you do? He's he's a grandfa. Um and even when we walked in there she's like, Oh, he's so such a granddad. Um but it's just lovely to hear them say that you can see that we've looked after him really well. And it is. It's, it's really nice and reassuring to hear. Because this was a vet we've never met before. We didn't see Joe, who's seen us for everything else. Um, we've never met her before, so she doesn't know us. She doesn't know the condition of our dogs, even. So for her to say that is just so lovely. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just really scared now. I don't know if I can cope with losing him right now. So she just ran into Tesco's and um, she keeps asking me how I'm feeling and I just feel empty. I've just got no emotion, no nothing. When I think about it, it scares me and I could sit and cry, but in general, I just feel empty. Please pray for our little boy just to last a little bit longer and I don't know I really don't just just pray for him pray for us we've got a new little bed it's on the back of my chair and we're gonna we've got that for him to snuggle in in the house with us and then it's gonna go into their hutch as well just just to give him a little bit more warmth because we woke up this morning and it was minus two um so yeah, we just want to kind of help them keep warm as well so that they burn less calories. Um, we should just have to see how the week goes. But yeah, keep thinking and praying for us. And um, we'll see you when we get home. Hi guys, we are home! And the girls have been going wild. Albert's been like sniffing me, my jumper the blankets, everything possible because she could smell the boys or well Nobby and then she kept like bombing it out to the hutch like But you were on my mummy And she was so cute. Um but I just said to Sophie that um my pen pal that I've got who's um on death row in uh, America um he sent me this little card. It says Howdy Charlie on it. And there's a little typewriter. Because he uses a typewriter to write and he knows I like my typewriter too. Don't, please don't, write them in it. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit busy. I'll fuss your face in a second. No. <laughs> and in that card he said, Happy New Year 2019 will be... <laughs> will be the best year yet. My thanks for your friendship. God bless you all. Your Texas friend, and I won't say his name. Um, the reason why the phone keeps doing that, and it, like that, and then I do this. This person, or this little dog, she keeps ramming her head under my arm to get attention for me to fuss her. And the problem is, she knows she's darn cute too. But, um, yeah, the first line in... Or line in a bit in the letter he sent. Which he, he always writes like masses of writing on his typewriter. Which ordinarily, if it was like by hand, it would have gone on for pages. But literally, it says, My thanks for your letter, the cute pic of the dogs. And it was like, Oh, like a www. <laughs> That was golden with an exclamation mark. 
And he says, no worries on the time it takes to reply. I fully understand you have medical issues going on. You inspire me to endure, my friend. And I just thought that was just so lovely. He's like on death row. And he's just the nicest person ever. And I, I bet you're probably thinking, well, he's not that nice. He's on death row. But I fully believe that he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And unfortunately, I can't remember if it was his ex or his actual girlfriend. She ended up getting injured in whatever it was that happened. And something went wrong at the hospital where she was being treated. And later died in hospital. And this prisoner got blamed for it. Um, because he was the only one that survived. Um... He's current. He's been on death row for over 20 years. And the reason behind that is because there are still some people within the jury and the courts that don't feel that he did what others are saying. So they've been putting it off and they've, they're still doing investigations and, like, looking into everything 20 years later. Um, I mean, can you imagine being in solitary confinement 23 hours a day for 20 years and yet they still don't know 100% whether you deserve to be there or not? Um, all I can say is it's just, it's, it's a blessing that he's not been executed already and then they find out afterwards, like, he's innocent. At least they're actually investigating this time before they do, like, any execution or whatever because there has been so there's been many stories in the past that people have been executed for a crime like 20 30 years ago when they didn't have this all this scientific stuff and then it just so happens that their case gets re-looked into and with the new science they found out it's been the wrong person so i'm glad that like things do get thoroughly looked into. I mean, there is still people that slip through the gap and it all goes wrong, but, yeah, I'm just hoping that he obviously, like, gets the time that is appropriate for whatever, like, what happens. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go into the whole story because it's not my story to tell, but, um, yeah, if you like pen palin, there's... Um, it's, it's quite rewarding writing to people on death row. Like, obviously, you heard from Soph yesterday that some of them can be a little bit funny, but um, I was quite lucky that the the person I wrote to, like, it was just, it's just been absolutely lovely. He, he sent birthday cards. He sent Christmas cards. Um, I think I've been writing to him now for a little over two years. Um, and, yeah, he's just just nice um if if it's something you want to do to write to a prisoner um because it's not just prisoners on death row it's like prisoners who throughout america that want to um write to people um if you um want to start looking into this sort of stuff let me know in the comments and i'll um i'll give you the link but um yeah it's just a little bit of something different for you guys. But I can hear Sophie's getting our tea ready. So, uh, we'll see you later. Is that okay with the light on? Yeah, I turned it on. So, guys, we're, we've got the, um, food stuff that we've got. It's a, rec a recovery mix, so it's got, it's packed more with nutrients. Yeah, and it's got, like, added vitamin C and things. I only know the vitamin C part because that was the bit that stuck in my mind from reading the packet. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've just got a syringe feed it in. in. In the hopes that he gains weight and... Yeah, because, I mean, usually when we have had to give... I know when we had it. When? When they had their operations. To have their certain somethings removed. No, oh, their balls removed. Well, yeah, I was trying to be polite because children oh. watch this. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I couldn't remember if it was spayed or neutered. Neutered, spayed. isn't it? Spayed. 
Is it? No, New Road, because they're boys. Yes. Get confused. Castrated. But, yes. Usually when we um, have to feed them this stuff, they're usually, like, literally, like the name says, recovering from, like, an operation or, like, if they've just not been well or something. Um, and at that point, generally, they're not really eating much, whereas Nobby is still eating, but we just need to give him more stuff, like more nutrients and things. So at least, I mean, you can clearly see, guys, that he's actually enjoying this. It's like high energy food without the effort for him. Obviously, he can still eat um, his normal food that we put in the hutch anyway. Um, so we've just got to. She, she did say we could also get like um, baby rabbit nuggets, but the problem is with Gizmo, he's perfectly healthy and his weight is perfectly fine. So if we give him a high energy food that he'll be eating as well, then he's just going to get overweight. Yeah, and that can cause a lot of problems as well. At least with this, we've got him. We've got Nobby, like, this stuff which is high energy and going to be really good for him. So we can um, hope that this is going to help. He's so good as well. Yeah. So it comes as a dry powder which you mix up with 90 mils of water. I say powder, it's like um, really finely milled nuggets basically but with added vitamins and stuff. Um, but yeah, so it says to feed it in small amounts, um, yeah, and you're supposed to have one sachet per kilogram of body weight, but we've, we're only allowed to do one a day because of the fact that he is still eating normal food. Nice boy. Hey. Oh, that's the bit I wanted to catch. I think we caught it a couple of times. Yeah. But I don't know if my, the, the syringe was in the way for some bit. Look at that nosy pig, guys. Gorgeous. Could give him a strawberry afterwards. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous. Oh. Sorry. Rude. Obviously, it gets a little bit messy, but that's okay because we'll just clean him afterwards. Yeah. Do you want me to syringe them up? I think we got it. The first time we didn't. We forgot to say earlier, guys, when we was on our way out. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> for some reason today, my pulse has just been a little bit bad and I've just been feeling really dizzy. Um... And I, I got up to go, like, crawl out to my chair. And I fell into the door because I went so dizzy. That white door. I had to... I was sat in the reading nook, and so I had to run up to try and catch her. <laughs> it was quite funny. It was. It was hilarious. She fell into a bowl, a wall, a, wall, a door, and a door handle. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't hurt yourself, though, did you? No. Just gonna say, there's us chuckling about it, and people are like, God, she could have hurt herself. <laughs> it's not, I clap, did not today. Any other day of the week probably would have. <laughs> yeah. Obviously we've locked the girls in the kitchen just because it's easier and the garden's still open so 
obviously they are finding things to bark at. They're a bit agitated as well because obviously the boy boys are like yes something's up with them yeah. they can tell it's not right I'm really enjoying this though man yeah I think for then for a little bit it might have only been your hand that was in focus <laughs> Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Jesus Christ, girls. You got the key in here? Yeah, but if I do the key and one of them's not in, we don't know about it. True. There's some more. Some more? Juicy. Is that yummy? Want some more? You hear him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How cute is this little monkey? Oh, you're going for it, boy. Yes, this is a good one, then.
people. Look at all that strawberry juice and that, that little nice? piece of meat stuck out. Gorgeous. Is that a nice little man? Yeah. <laughs> You're so happy. Should we wipe you down? <laughs> no, man. I'm, I'm not sorry, a baby, man. Not a baby. You can't go out looking like that. Your brother will get jealous. Me? Hey, should we put you back with Gizmo for a little bit now? Yeah? Let me just hide my face. Hi guys! I've got a, a Nobbit in here. In a tiny little bowly. And Charlie's got a Gizmo. And we're a family. And the girls are down on the floor. Yeah. Being annoying and difficult. Although now that the camera's up, they'll be in very bloody good. They are. Typical. been one busy ass day like very draining very emotional yeah but uh we live to tell another tale Hang on. i've um just currently cutting her nails So good. Yeah. I had to change my answer sickness patch, yeah, so it is what? now on this side. Oh no, you've got a naked behind. As opposed to this side. Yeah. And I didn't react to it, which is great. I used to have the um um morphine patches, but they just would not stick to me. It was like I'd have them on for a few hours and they'd be falling off. And obviously and then, then to last for ages, they, they were a week long, so it really screwed up my dosages. Um but when I went and seen the chest clinic the other day for my lungs, the oxygen review, it was also a review for uh, my NIV at night. They wanted me to do a sleep study. That is here, but the problem is we don't get bed till, bed till late and we've got to be up very early, so we'll probably only capture about four hours. And I doubt in that time that I would get into a proper deep sleep. So I'm going to do it Saturday till Sunday. No, Friday to Saturday. Um, and then hopefully it will get like a good night's sleep and get my, my all my sleep then as well. But I also said about my face mask, irritate my face, you know, when I wake up and you see, my, um, when we pick up the, uh, the camera, you see that I've got redness like all around here. That's from my mask and it's really sore in the morning. So they've sent me some of this fluffy, um, cloth type stuff and I've already put it on my mask. Feels kind of like a bath towel. Yeah. Really strange. So that's all on. I was a bit pedantic with it, and I had to cut it to go to the curves well, of the that thing. Me. Most people would just stick it on, but I couldn't have no dodgy flaps. Does that surprise anybody else? So um, there and 
to the curve there. So let's give that a shot for the night. And both boys are back in their hutch. The girls went into the hutch multiple times. They come out with their heads covered. Uh, Alba's got a very flaky tummy. Yeah, I'm going to um, put some of the sterile cream on it because that usually helps. Yeah. I thought we'd try the other one last night, the non steroidal one, but that didn't no. really work. No. So. It's really bad. But, it's really um, bad, it's going everywhere as well. But yes, that's kind of been our day. Sophie's going out with her mum and Nan tomorrow. I'll be at home with the girls. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, hopefully she'll catch with some vlog and I'll do some vlog. Indeed. And um, I'll kind of do my living. best. It's, it's kind of hard. Well, because there's a lot of driving tomorrow for me, so yeah. whether I'll actually manage to vlog or not, I don't know. Well, when you get to your nans, you're not driving. You well, know, I'm not, but. <laughs> but yeah. Thank you for coming on our day, people. Yes, and thank you for clearly keeping your fingers crossed because I think it works. Yes. She's got tickly feet. Really tickly feet. Blink it out. You can't even move it. I'm not And uh, Dixie sat here waiting for her too. But, um, oh, careful. Alva likes to stick things in her eyes, but on this occasion, it was the nail cutters. So I just read that. So yeah, thank you for coming on our day, guys. And uh, we shall see you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Good night. Not forgotten. Thursday, 10th of January. God will never forget the needy, the hope of the afflicted will never perish. They are children hanging onto scraps of blankets in a shelter where there is no privacy. They are young women fleeing from danger to a land they don't know, leaving family far behind. They are men with guns driven to despair, desperate acts with false promises for glory. They are prisoners beaten for their beliefs. They are sick, they are cold, they are lost. They feel all alone, but they are not alone. Sometimes it's easy to look around the world and feel despair. It seems there are too many people hurting. How could we help them all? But we must not give up hope because we must not give up on God. And God promises that he will not forget every single person who is in need. He will bring them hope and he may be just the people to and we may just and we may be just the people to help him do that. What can you do today to remember someone in need? You might be able to donate to a food pantry or serve in a soup kitchen. You might be able to lead a child in Bible study or visit a patient. And you can always pray. Don't waste time worrying about all that you cannot do on your own. Just imagine what you can do with God. God, in all my busyness, let me never forget people who are struggling every day.